Hello, I'm Brian Kajiyama, and I'm a lecturer in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii. I have cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy affects people differently. In my case, the lack of oxygen affected a portion of my brain that affects my left side. I grew up dreaming that I would be a star athlete for the Rainbow Warriors. However, God had different plans for me and I am very grateful to be a part of the College of Education family. The year was 2002. I was just digging in for this new career here in the Special Education Department. I knew of Brian Kajiyama. I knew he was really smart. I knew he was just finishing his undergraduate career here at UH. We were doing a series of shows and we decided we were going to highlight what we called role models. And I don't know how it came to be, but one of us said, you know, we should search out Brian Kajiyama, see how that kid is doing. Welcome to Front Runner. In today's segment, we will all have a chance to enjoy and get to know Brian Kajiyama. Brian is not here we asked him if he'd be a role model for this show. He agreed. And he uh, proceeded over the next week or two to write the script. We filmed it at Kokua, which is the Disabled Student Services here. And it was just Brian and me alone in a room. And uh, Brian sat at a computer and sort of feigned or pretended to be Brian typing. He had really already written the answers via email, so we had all of his answers on the computer. And then we decided that I would be his voice and I would read the answer. And by learning about disability related issues. And I went home that night and I kind of looked at the footage and thought, you know, how weird is this that I am Brian's voice. It seemed odd to me. Here's this really smart kid, just about ready to graduate from UH, and he doesn't have any way to voice anything. It was then that I felt a responsibility. As far as my communication devices, I would describe my relationship with one of hate and love. When I first was introduced to a communication device, I really had no say in the matter. So, of course, I did what any child would do when forced to use something. I did everything possible not to use it. Jim kept telling me, you really need to reconsider this whole communication thing. Brian not having a voice is not cutting it, friend. It was through that simple statement that lit the proverbial light bulb in my mind. I knew Jim was right and I was finally ready to entertain the idea of having an augmentative communication device with speech output. Brian and I had set up a date for another follow-up interview and I asked Brian if I could bring a communication device to the interview and have him say something on a device. Now as I grow and have to think of communicating outside of this ivory tower known as school. I realize I will need some device. I brought this cheap little talker. I mean, I don't think it cost more than a couple hundred dollars. And it had a tinny robotic voice, but it was a talker. So we prepped it up. I told Brian what I might ask him. I guess I asked him something like looking to the future. Uh, what place do you see having a an audible voice might have. This device definitely has its potential. It's compact and seemingly easy to transport. The only minor drawback, and again maybe this is something I'll need to learn to accept, is the robotic voice. Brian pushed the little buttons and the device said, you know, I have never liked these voices. They sound too robotic. And then he ended it by saying, but perhaps beggars can't be choosers. My critical view of the speech quality on such devices is something that I need to learn to accept and quickly, and I must learn to not be so picky. As they say, beggars can't be too choosy. Just a few months later, I got an email from Brian Kajiyama. He asked me if he might 
volunteer in my office. He'd never seen this office. But I wrote him back and I said, of course you can work in my office. I always need help. No, no worries. All good. None of us really knew what I would be doing. But I knew he had tons of media and my thinking was I would just catalog his media. One day Jim tells me, Hey, I think you should help me with media productions. And I have zero experience, but I was very willing and eager to learn. I think to Brian's great surprise, I had him doing media in here right away. And most of that media was coming in from the Pacific region. It was stuff I had shot or my friends had shot on Pacific Islands. And then, of course, the, the office was populated by young people who were coming in and studying and doing all the stuff that young people do when they kind of feel safe. And uh, Brian was making friends. Meeting new people from across the Pacific has been extremely vital in my developing into a better person. Jim has traveled to many places as you've learned. Jim would travel and would come back with media footage, which I would edit for him. Be it his travels to American Samoa, to his travels to the last fishing village in Hawaii, Malolii. Even if I did not go physically, I still felt like I was there through going through his many hours of footage. After a while, I really grew to love these places, and even if I did not meet some of the people in these videos, I really took pride in doing quality work because I wanted to honor the people in the videos as much as I could by doing my best editing. And this was a big risk on Jim's part because he was trusting me not to delete any of his good footage. But it turned out and from there he trusted me more and over time I learned more just by having the chance to actually do things. Good morning. Welcome to our third week of SPED 480. I hope you all had a positive weekend. Brian loves teaching at the University of Hawaii. He just loves it. He's consistently said it and he's walked the walk. He's taught quite a number of courses for us now. And um, I would very much like that to continue and grow. It worked so I provided decent instruction. <laughs> I seriously did not envision myself teaching when I graduated from high school. My idea of a career was to be a computer programmer and work in some quiet office, just typing code each day. Looking back, I would be miserable doing that. I love interacting with people. As I look towards my future, I really hope to remain here at the university, teaching courses for the Department of Education. Brian likes to inspire others. He, he's not shy about that. He knows when he speaks to audiences, he can touch them. And um, I hope that he will be able to find opportunities to travel in our region or maybe even across the world and uh, express what's inside of him um, because he he does have messages that touch others. Let Jim be an example of what is possible. What is possible when you truly take time to care for other people? My relationship with Jim has evolved from one of being a mentor to Mati to one of being colleagues but most importantly as friends. We enjoy doing things together outside of the world of academia, which I feel is important for all people to have as we have a tendency to get stuck in this bubble we call work. So just going to Hawaii games where we don't discuss anything about work and just focus on having fun. That's what I appreciate a lot.